Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I wanted to talk about Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker and is it still a good game in 2023? The reason I'm making this video is because I just literally finished The Wind Waker for the very first time in 2023. I did try playing this game about 13 years ago, but I never was able to get through it and I didn't exactly own the game back then, but now I was able to play it and I was able to play it all the way through and I actually want to share that experience with you guys and whether it's actually a game that stands the test of time in 2023. Now to be fair, I did not give this game the time of day when it first came out because I was really turned off by the graphics. I came from playing the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time and the Majora's Mask, which are very different games graphically than the Wind Waker. When I first saw the Wind Waker as a kid, I thought, what is this? And it looks like a kid's game. It's funny because this was coming from a kid who was probably, I think I might've been around the age of 12 at the time. And I was like, this looks like a little kid's game. And I just did not feel like it was a Legend of Zelda game due to the graphics. However, nowadays I have a, changed my mind. So I actually think the graphics is actually one of the best parts of this game. And the reason I say that is because these graphics are timeless. The graphics are this cell shaded type of graphics that you see in some games nowadays. I guess the Tears of the Kingdom and Breath of the Wild are both games that also have cell shaded graphics and probably will stand up to the test of time to some degree as well. But the way that Wind Waker did it is they really, it kind of gave me this like World of Warcraft vibe or just like this cartoony vibe. And because it was this vibe and it wasn't trying to be like realistic, it actually was able to stand the test of time. When I played it, I didn't play the HT version. I just played the normal version and I actually think it was quite good for 2023. It wasn't bad at all because of the style they chose. Now let's talk about the gameplay mechanics. So the gameplay isn't the most, I don't know how to say it, but maybe immersive. It's not the most complex. It's actually pretty simple. The mechanics are actually some of the most simple Legend of Zelda mechanics that I've played, but I guess most Legend of Zelda games are pretty simple as far as the mechanics go. So it was just a, you know, a, a basic Legend of Zelda 3D game that is a little bit older. And the some of the fights were really fun. Like when you're facing these certain one guys, you had to react with the A button. And your character Link would do like a spin or like a flip and like hit their backside. And I thought that was pretty cool. But other than that, it was pretty basic. You kind of swing your sword around, you shoot your arrow. The boomerang is kind of a fun thing. You know, you throw bombs, you roll, you use your shield. It's really like pretty much a basic, what you would expect from Legend of Zelda. Also on the front of gameplay mechanics, there was things like puzzles, right? There's a couple of puzzles in the game. Some of the puzzles were kind of difficult. I got stuck at some parts like for a very long time, but it was more or less not because of the puzzle itself, but because of ignorance of like being able to do certain things, you know, just being ignorant in that regard. But I don't think it was like too challenging as far as the puzzles go. It wasn't like a Silent Hill or a Resident Evil puzzle. It was quite easy comparatively to those games, but it was fun. Now let's talk about the story. So the story is, honestly, it's probably one of my least favorite stories uh, that I've played. And I know some of you are going to hate me for that because this is like your favorite Zelda game of all time. But I'm going to go out and say it that that was probably nostalgia that's probably nostalgia for you guys and that's cool you can appreciate it but i really thought like ocarina and majora's mask stories were much more in depth and much more they just felt more compelling i guess this is obviously a subjective opinion but i guess you're here watching this for my subjective opinion so i'm giving it to you yeah the game is just not the story is pretty basic. Basically, you are Link, you're born on an island, and your sister gets kidnapped by a giant bird who works for Ganondorf. And 
you are on a quest to rescue your sister and then eventually you go with these pirates and these with the head of the pirates is actually zelda but she doesn't really know she's zelda or she forgot or something like that and then basically ganondorf captures zelda and you beat ganondorf it's pretty basic there's a whole component where the red lion ship is actually the king of hyrule and he kind of guides you around and stuff and it's it's not like the most compelling story it's a pretty basic story but it's fun it's upbeat it's very like a fun vi you know vibing type of environment but it's not like the craziest story i think like twilight princess also has an edge on it majora's mask ocarina of time like i said link to the past has a better story so i it's definitely not for me one of the best zelda stories you know i talked about puzzles a little bit earlier but we'll go a little bit more into level design and exploration some of the levels in the temples were actually really well done but i will go on a bit of a rant here the makar and medley temples the i think it's like the earth and the wind temple dude whoever designed those levels those were the most obnoxious annoying dungeons i've almost ever done in any zelda game ever you had to like switch between characters between makar and link and medley and link and you had to like always keep them around and like yet it was very uh tedious i wouldn't even say it was fun it was very tedious very tedious indeed but the other levels in the game were actually pretty good they weren't super complex they were fun i thought they were good all the other dungeons were fun good time for me so yeah most of these dungeons stood the test of time the other two did not those two dungeons absolutely did not for me but the exploration man let's talk about that that was a really cool part of the game so a uh, vast majority of the game you're on a boat and you're on the ocean and you're like exploring these different islands and on these different islands there's different people different quests different things you can do I thought that was a pretty neat thing. Good thing, eventually they allow you to get the, what is it called? It's like the song of teleportation or whatever it's called. Before that though, it was a little bit annoying because you really are sailing for a long time. And sometimes you're like, dude, I just want to get to my destination. And yeah, a couple of things happen sometimes along the way, but it does get old. You're like, okay, I've already seen this sea monster. I've already seen these creatures. I've seen these sharks. I just need to get to where I want to get. And a good thing they, they do give you a song that teleports you. But I will also say that playing that wind song over and over and over just to get the wind going where you want it to was, in my opinion, a bit of a poor choice. I think it should have been easier to do. I don't think you should have had to play a full song and do the compass thing. I think it should have just been like a thing you select real quick and you change the direction of the wind because it just takes a lot of time. You're like, oh boy, the wind's in the wrong direction. Let me pull out my, well, I don't remember. I call it a baton. You pull out the baton and you, you, and you play the song over and over and you have to keep on doing this and it feels quite tedious. But the exploration overall was really cool. And it, it was a beautiful ocean. And it's these islands are beautiful. And it's really cool. Now, let's talk about the music and the sound design. The, the music in this game, actually, it's really good. Like, all the music is actually quite good. And it's quite more memorable. I actually like the melodies. I think that whoever composed these did a really good job. And it's some of the best parts of the game, actually. It's like you'll walk into a boss fight and this song will just like catch you. You're like, whoa. And it's not like a real scary song, but they're like, good. It's like, they, you can tell that people put effort into the music in this game. And I think that the music is one of the best parts of the game. It really is good. The music is great in this game. And I wish I just kind of had the soundtrack. I guess I can go just look it up on YouTube, but it's really good stuff, guys. I will say that the music stood up in 2023, absolutely. Now, let's talk about the replay value in this game. So, I think Wind Waker does have some replay value. I don't think the dungeons necessarily are, like, good replay value. But I think the exploration is, because there is a lot of extra little things in this game that you can go do, and you can get, like, new heart containers and new, you know, little, new little items and stuff, like every Zelda game. So that, I think that makes it really replayable. But I've also heard that you can download like a mod and it changes the game completely around. 
and that mod would for sure make the game way more replayable just by changing the steps that you take. So instead of doing like step one, step two, step three, you're like, oh, I do step three, then step two, then step one, or step five, then three. And so that seems like it would offer more replay value. But overall, I think you could play this game like a few times, or you can just go back to your old save file and just go explore some of the content that wasn't part of the main storyline. Now, let's talk about the UI a little bit in the game. So the UI is pretty basic for the most part, but it feels a little weird or clunky that you have to change between the map UI and like back to the normal UI. And then you have to, within the map UI, there's like more UI that you have to like kind of dig into to go look at these like maps that you have. And I don't think it's like super, I don't know what you would call it, intuitive maybe, or like very friendly. But I think it's not horrible, but it could be better. I did miss some information in the game because I didn't realize I had to look at certain maps and stuff. And maybe that's a personal, you know, a user error. But it wasn't like, it didn't exactly stand up to the test of time with the complete UI experience. That being said, it wasn't bad. It wasn't great. The UI was okay. But, you know, saying all that I've said, I would like to kind of just share with you like how I would rate the game. You know, I've, I've given you a lot of details on like different aspects, but I haven't really given you a, a conclusive thought. So I'm gonna say overall, did Wind Waker stand up to the test of time? And I'm gonna say without a doubt, yes. Wind Waker stood up to the test of time and I think it's still a good game in 2023. Do I think it's the best game out there? No. But do I think it's a good game? Yes. Did I enjoy playing this game overall? Yes. There were a couple times in the game that I did not have fun. Like for example, when you had to go search for the Triforce pieces, I think that could have been at least cut in half as far as the time that you had to spend looking for those things. However, overall, the game was pretty good. What would I rate it on a scale from one to 10? I would give this game probably a six, maybe a 6.5, possibly around there, probably a 6.5. I don't think it was as good as other entries in the Zelda series like Majora's Mask, Twilight Princess, Ocarina of Time, Link to the Past, uh, Link's Awakening. I think those other games were just a little bit more, I guess, original. Wind Waker kind of didn't do anything super new. I, the boat thing was new, but it kind of gets old pretty quick, I suppose. But overall, it was a good game. I would put it somewhere in the middle of my favorite Zelda games, or maybe on the lower tier of my favorite Zelda games. I will tell you this, it was better than Minish Cap. A lot better than Minish Cap. <laughs> I played Minish Cap, and Minish Cap wasn't horrible, but it was like my least favorite Zelda game. But it's a Zelda game, and it was still fun. Wind Waker's good. I know some of you, it's like your favorite game of all time. I think that's nostalgia mostly talking, but at the same time, it's not a bad game. It's actually quite a good game. And I would recommend it for most people who like Zelda games to go back and play it for sure. So thanks for tuning in guys. And I hope you enjoyed my video. If you agree with me, please let me know. If you disagree with me, please let me know. Put it in the comments. Just tell me why. I like to engage with you guys and anybody who watches the video, so. I'll be streaming more Zelda games and more retro games and all kinds of different games up on my Twitch. So please feel free to follow my Twitch channel and just maybe make some suggestions there about what I should be playing or just say what's up. Well, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you guys later.